This video was sponsored by Elsword. Yes, they were nice enough to sponsor me for a second time on this channel, and if you're not aware, the game is a completely free-to-play MMORPG. My favourite part is simply the artwork and designs of, like, everything, and I think it's definitely worth checking out the game just to experience that. Of course, the game mechanics like PvE and PvP combat, guilds and item trading, and the new skill systems are constantly improving and the game is becoming a lot more user-friendly now and has pretty much gone from pay-to-win to play-to-win, play which has made Made the game so much more individualised now, where each choice you make has genuine consequences in the long term that affects the lore and your character. And just to be transparent, I know there's this stigma against sponsors on YouTube, but having them every once in a while really does support the channel, and if you simply click on the link in the description, it does go a seriously long way in helping me. Massive thank you to Elsword for sponsoring me again, and let's get on with the topic of this video. Attack on Titan is a story about monsters, and by the word monster you probably think I mean just the titans, but that isn't the case. There are people in this world who act more cruel and inhumane than the titans ever could. People who have the capacity for mayhem and destruction. This series is filled with monsters in all forms. They are the perpetrators and oppressors of this world, be it the titans, corrupt officials, ruthless killers, the oppressive elites, genocidal pacifists, and most of all, our main character, Eren Jaeger. I will you. You I've covered him in a video before, but that was mainly summarising his development. Today I want to go a bit more in depth and to analyse what his philosophy and growth actually means for the story. Isayama has always been someone that has valued freedom from oppression. This was because he lived an enclosed, sheltered life as a child, feeling frustrated that he was trapped without experiencing the outside world. And what I find interesting is that this specific frustration, this deep-rooted aspect of Isayama's personality, the need to not be restrained, the desire for freedom, and the conviction to move forward in the face of hardship, is shown most convincingly through our protagonist Aaron Jaeger. Isayama gave a voice to his own experiences and fears through Eren, but that made him difficult and restricted. It made him less of a character and more someone that was forced to encompass the straightforward theme of fighting against oppression. Isayama even described Eren as being dragged along by the narrative and a slave to the story. And I find this description surprisingly ironic. Eren is supposed to embody the main theme of breaking free from shackles, yet he's someone who is innately chained down by his status as protagonist. But Isayama developed this idea. He made being a slave to the story the essence of Eren's character. He developed the simple theme of fighting against oppression that Eren stood for into something a lot more nuanced and a lot darker, almost twisting Eren into this grim character study of what fighting for freedom and never giving up does to a person in this cruel world. The one-dimensional enemies that were the titans were replaced by the governments, titan shifters, geopolitical enemies, and eventually the entire world itself. Isayama made the oppressors more human and made fighting against that oppression more monstrous. He took this theme of fighting for freedom that is central to Eren's character and flipped it on its head. The world isn't wrong to fear the Eldian race because of their potential to turn into titans, and Eren isn't in the wrong to fight against that oppression to prevent the genocide of his race. But it's that pure act of fighting against oppression throughout the story that has turned Eren into a monster. In order to survive, he's had to develop his capability for malevolence and destruction necessary to fight for freedom, no matter the cost. There is no pure evil or clear antagonist in the story anymore. It's become a nuanced human conflict with moral justifications on either side, but the world is still very much eat or be eaten, and Isayama has developed Eren's once simplistic philosophy of fighting against oppression as a means to integrate his more monstrous side into his personality. 
He had him turn from a naive, righteous victim into a dangerous, vicious perpetrator. And this development of Eren's inner monstrosity, his evolution from victim to perpetrator, can be seen throughout the key events of the story. When the series started, Eren lived in a small protected area and was naive to the true dangers of the world. He had a simplistic view on morality. People were either good or bad, morally black or white, and he believed his perspective was undeniably right. Most importantly, Eren always had this potential for violence and and destruction, but he was undisciplined in controlling it. Eren's naivety also meant that he wasn't prepared for anything on that fateful day. There was nothing he could do. He was just a child. His home was destroyed. His mother was eaten. He was vulnerable. He was powerless, and he ran away. He was a naive victim but learned something very important. He understood that he was just prey. He experienced the truth of this world, that it's either eat or be eaten. By finally understanding his own powerlessness against the Titans, Eren used that as motivation to fight for his freedom until the day he could finally confront the monster. But as soon as he did that, he metaphorically and literally became a monster. A monster that he was unable to control. So how did Eren deal with this? Well, he developed his inner monster, his capacity for mayhem and destruction, voluntarily. And the fact that Eren develops it voluntarily is the most important part. People have the capability to act cruel and inhumane in this world, but most of the time they're forced to by other people or their environments. It's never their own free will. But the fact that Eren chooses to develop it voluntarily means that he can discipline it. He learns to control his darker side, which allows him greater control over his titan. When he first turned into a titan, he had no control whatsoever, acting on pure instinct, rage and desire. The second time, he gained a modicum of control, only being able to act on simplistic tasks. He gained slight self-awareness by protecting Armin and Mikasa against the cannon shots, he learns to develop his fighting technique with the female titan and gains the capacity to kill Annie despite his emotional connection to her. He shows this capacity to kill people close to him almost immediately with Reiner and Bertel. He learns to bring his rage under control. He learns to push his emotions aside and continue fighting despite the impossible odds to protect Mikasa. He learns to believe in himself when faced with Rod's Titan. He becomes disciplined at controlling his power when faced with Reiner again. He goes along with Armin's plan against Bertel despite it meaning almost certain death for his childhood friend. And when he finally learns the truth in the basement, his perspective is forever changed. Eren makes the choice to speak with Reiner and Marley, he makes the choice to manipulate Falco, he makes the choice to attack the Tiber family, to sacrifice innocent citizens, to force the Survey Corps into action, and to work with Zeke to gain control of a weapon that can bring about the apocalypse. The entire time he makes the choice to become the orchestrator of these situations, and progressively defines the story with his own free will. It's by willingly developing his previously uncontrollable darker side through these key events in the story that Eren could integrate it within his personality and gain greater control over his titan. He became more determined and assertive. He learned to manifest his aggressiveness properly. He gained the capacity to kill not only titans, but humans. To be willing to kill people he already had emotional connections to. To be capable of violence and have full control over when to use it. He's no longer indecisive or reliant on the opinions of others, but instead he's gained the strength of character to carry the burdens of his decisions on his shoulders. He's matured. This is what it means to fight for freedom in the cruel world of Attack on Titan. As Armin said countless times, he learns to integrate his darker side within a comprehensive and practical philosophy. His once motivational mindset of never giving up has now been twisted into a ruthless philosophy of fighting for freedom no matter the cost until his enemies are destroyed, no matter if his enemies are human or not. 
But what I find tragic about this is that he doesn't get to this point without being permanently changed. He's touched by evil, he has a limited lifespan, his perspective has forever changed from his closest friends and the people who care about him. He's treated differently, he's lost their trust, he's never that carefree and happy Eren we see at the beginning of the series again. He's been contaminated with evil and the unknown. The ocean is the point where Eren's adolescence ends. When they reach it, he's only focused on cold reality, thinking about the dark future ahead of him. This is where he splits paths from Armin, Mikasa, and the Survey Corps. This is where he takes up the almost inhuman role of fighting the world itself. And it's at this point where I believe Eren Jaeger fully becomes the monster of the story. He broke the rules, he massacred innocent civilians, children, politicians, world leaders, military officials, wiped out the Tiber family, broke military conduct, and broke the rules of the Survey Corps. These are undeniably the actions of a ruthless perpetrator. This is the dark route Isuyama has taken with Eren, and this is what his philosophy has turned him into. And this change has been a massive source of controversy within the story and community. Is Eren justified here? Was there really any other way? Do drastic times call for drastic measures? Does the end justify the means? And is Eren's extremist philosophy of fighting for freedom no matter the cost the only way to save paradise? In return for breaking the rules and committing a moral act, he killed the leaders of the Malian army, forced the Survey Corps to destroy its naval fleets and ports, gained the power of the Warhammer Titan, united the founding titan and the shifter with royal blood, gave Paradis more time to prepare for an attack, and can potentially control an apocalyptic weapon. It's an interesting debate, but I'm not really interested in discussing whether he's justified or not. I'm more interested in his actual state of mind, and I think Eren provides the perfect quote to highlight this in chapter 97. I've been thinking every day since coming here, how did things turn out this way? Ruined minds and bodies, people with no freedom left, people who have even lost themselves. What kind of person would want to go to war if they knew they were going to end up like this? But there was something there all along pushing us right into hell. For most of us, that something is not our own free will. We're forced to by others or by our own environment. That's why the people who push themselves into hell see a different hell from the rest of us. They also see something beyond that hell. Maybe it's hope, maybe it's yet another hell. I don't know which it is. The only people who do know are the ones who keep moving forward. This perfectly encapsulates Eren's change from victim to perpetrator, but it has a tragic undertone. It gives off a sense that deep down, he's suffering. That he isn't just fighting on the battlefield, but fighting in his head at all times. His mind is tormented from the attacks he's committed, the influence of his titan powers, the memories of his predecessors, and the burdens he has to carry. From his talk with Reiner, we understand he no longer views his enemies as monsters. He understands their justifications and perspectives. He knows he's killing people, some of them victims, just like he was at the beginning of the story. And yet, he keeps moving forward. He's suffering whilst going down this path, but nonetheless suppresses his emotions in order to keep on fighting. It's an undeniably tragic aspect of his character. The fact that he's taken up this almost inhuman role and has become the enemy of the entire world. But this is the price for freedom. It's given us an entirely new perspective of his most iconic phrase, Tatakai, Tatakai. 
It's the sheer evolution of how Isayama handled this Tatakai philosophy and developed the theme of fighting against oppression that makes Eren's change so interesting. He's almost taken this orthodox shonen narrative of never giving up and believing in yourself that we've seen countless times in other shows and twisted it into its utmost darkest limits. There are justifications on either side, and he's almost willingly taken up this inhuman role of being the story's protagonist and antagonist. To some, he's a hero and saviour, and to others, he's the devil who will bring the apocalypse. But this is the monster he needs to become in order to bring change. In Attack on Titan, being harmless doesn't make you a morally good person, it just makes you prey. And on the other side, having the capability for violence doesn't make you a morally bad person, it's entirely what you choose to do with that potential. And when things are put like that, you begin to notice how much this story's take on morality parallels with the real world. People have justifications and reasons for what they do, but no human alive is purely good or purely evil. Just like how in the story, Eren isn't the saviour of the world, and also isn't the devil of it. It's exactly as Kruger said in chapter 88. There is no such thing as truth in this world, that is our reality. Anyone can become a god or a devil, all it takes is for someone to claim that to be the truth. Every person is capable of being violent or destructive, morally good or morally bad. Having the capability for violence isn't inherently evil or wrong, it's entirely what you choose to do with that power that makes all the difference. It makes you wonder if this cycle of oppression will ever end in the story, and if people are doomed to repeat the same history and mistakes. All we do know is that all this suffering, death and destruction is the price to pay for freedom. Eren has the will to move forward, even if that makes him a monster. He's allowed the walls of his past to become the key to his future.